Okay, hello everyone. I guess you can see the screen. So yeah, I, I work for Yolla smartphone company. So um, I used to work in Nokia like almost a decade, and and so did a lot of my work uh, comrades. Like uh, uh, we built a different mobile uh, mobile phones, then later smartphones, and a uh, lot of the devices never came to market. So uh, don't judge us by Tumbian or anything like that, please. Um, so. Okay, um, I'm going to talk to you about surprisingly user interfaces and how I think what you need and how can you build a beautiful user interface. Uh, here is kind of the rough uh, uh, sections, I'm gonna, different chapters I'm going to talk, talk to you about. So first about a little bit about Qt and, and selfies, uh, then, then go, go into some basics of mobile user interfaces and, and, and then talk about the development process, like roles, different roles I think are needed and, and, and culture for uh, creating uh, nice experiences. And then um, after we get this theory part over, then going back to the selfies, like how, what, did, what did we do and how did we do it? How did we structure assets and, and uh, like build this kind of um, full user interface for our operating system? And, and then uh, if we have time, and uh, I'd like to do some live coding on, on QML. So um, how many know? Uh, Qt. How many have developed Qt? A few. What about QML? Two persons. Okay. So most of you don't uh, know this technology that well. Okay. Good. I, I didn't expect ex expect you to. Um, and and do you know, do you know what selfies is? Okay. There's a couple of hands raising. Okay. I'm gonna tell you. Uh -huh. So uh, first, a bit of introduction. So uh, Yolla is a, a smartphone operating uh, system company. We, are like, we do smartphone uh, a mobile operating system, if you will. Here are devices we have made. Uh, so uh, on the left, left side, there's the first Yolla one phone. So uh, Nokia used to do a platform called Amigo with Intel and uh, put hundreds of millions of uh, dollars in, in development, de developing that asset. Uh, but then they uh, changed the strategy and went to Windows Phone. Um, luckily, the asset is still, was still good, uh, so we kind of took that forward. Also, Samsung is using uh, developing their own uh, operating system called Tizen, and that's also like derivative of the Miko, Miko uh, system. So, if you're using Samsung uh, what smartwatches or, or televisions, you might it might be running Tizen. So it's 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 architecturally quite similar to what self selfies is. is. And uh, we first did the phone. Uh, we had to do the devices ourselves uh, because to, to prove that we can do this. Uh, so first we did the phone, and then there's a larger device uh, on on the right. There's this tablet, and um, after we kind of. Uh, did this of like uh, reference devices. Uh, now we have actual customers. So there's uh, the red one is uh, uh, Aquafish, which is a device uh, in, in, uh, sold in India. So Index, uh, who sells like I don't know three million devices per month, is selling uh, our phone. That our phone is not selling that much, but it's mostly Android. Not, uh, but um, they, they 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 came up with selfies phone. And then there's on the right side uh, there's this uh, Turing. Turing Phone, which is a um, uh, Chinese-American uh, startup. Uh, they bought a Nokia mobile phone factory in Salo. Uh, it was in news, if you, if you, if you saw. Um, yeah, so uh, we had to do devices. And of course, our software needs to run on devices. But in, in the core, we are a software company. I have a question. Yeah. Is the Turing Phone actually going to happen? I, yeah, it, see, so uh, it, ship, it has ships, but it, not, not on large con quantities, but the people who pre-order it. And uh, if you want to try it out, uh, so the devices I showed earlier, they are here. So if you want to try it out, here is the tablet, the Turing phone, uh, uh, index device, and, and the other one. Because I used to live in Salo, and I heard some question marks about it, but there's not much to talk about it, really. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, this is what uh, what, what we uh, do is uh, we do um, this is a mobile uh, smartphone uh, 
system UI um, operating system. So there's kind of, on the left side, you can see uh, our main view. So when you unlock the device, you see your running applications. You see what activities you have been doing if you had uh, emails, what's, what, what is in, uh, um, what, uh, like, um, what, what did you do like, uh, since, since uh, you locked the device? Uh, on, on the middle, uh, okay, there's ap application grid, so you uh, just, it's showing a couple of the applications we are developed, and on, on the bottom you see some Android applications. So our platform, we are a mobile Linux operating system, but we support running Android applications in this kind of sandboxed, um, um, not a virtual machine, but kind of like uh, another operating system running side by side. Uh, side, by side. And then on the right there's uh, uh, events view. So in, in, in the home screen, in the uh, system UI, you, uh, events view is kind of summarizing what's happening in your life. So it's 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 so yeah, showing uh, like notifications, weather information, and, and such. Uh, this, the exact same code, the same uh, experience is also running on tablet and on a, on a landscape form factor. So here is the uh, tablet screenshots. Uh, so on tablet, you can have more area layouts. You can have a little bit uh, like uh, it doesn't have to be so cramped. You don't have to worry about finger touch usability that much because you have more space. You can show more contents like the event uh, view. You can see there's two uh, views side by side. So you can uh, um, yeah show more information. So uh, selfies is based on Qt. Uh, Qt has something like 3,000. 300,000 developers, that's what cute sites often. Not sure how many of those are active, but uh, so uh, Qt was used in the BlackBerry, new BlackBerry operating system, which didn't fare that well, but it, uh, technically it was really well done. Uh, it's used by Ubuntu nowadays. Uh, it's basically like if you are working in a Linux space, it's the only mature UI development framework, or application development framework you can have, which where you can do this kind of uh, uh, Post iPhone era user interfaces, animated, uh, gesture based, uh, like nice, nice looking, pixel perfect user interfaces. Um, it's uh, it has long history, mostly from the desk, from the desktop si side. But the good thing about that is that it's, it is cross platform, so you can run Qt on on almost any op any popular operating system, whether it's a desktop operating system or a, or a mobile one. So when you develop a Qt based application, you, uh, you can run it on on. Um, on uh, your iPhone, for example. Um, and uh, because Nokia bought Qt uh, and, and later, okay, sold when the strategy changed, but the, because Nokia put so much investment in Qt, it has a lot of like mobile touch device embedded uh, focus. So, so it, it's good for uh, doing this kind of, uh, I don't know, plane infotainment system, car, car uh, like uh, huts and, 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 and different kind of e like embedded ATMs and, and, and a lot of them are like when you are you you in most cases you don't know that you're running Qt. So when you are using some ATM or or, or, or some like uh, some embedded user interface, you, you don't realize that it's actually running Qt on the on the on the background. And one what what thing what makes Qt popular is the developer experience. So they kind of um, they have put a lot of effort into APIs and examples. Nowadays, kind of the competition has catch up. So it's like I, I used to say, think that Qt is the like best there is. Now it's not so clear cut. Like Android and iOS and those, they kind of they they are really strong nowadays too. And uh, while Qt is used in like millions of devices, uh, of course, I have to say Android is then of course in a different scale at, as uh, uh, as embedded uh, market goes and this touch touch device market goes. But Qt is still used a lot. Uh, the u user interface technology uh, that uh, we use and what, what's like the, uh, there's a couple of different choices in Qt, but this is kind of the best, best technology there is. Uh, it's quite similar to web development. So if you have done any HTML5 uh, apps or websites, you kind of, kind of are quite at home because it's, you define a structure, there's a property based interface where you say that, okay, this element has this position, this width, uh, I, um, like, you, you define kind of you define a structure and, and, and parameterize different elements and, and there, there you get layouts and, and animations and, 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 and such. Um, nice thing about QML and execute is that uh, when you do HTML development, you often kind of um, 
you do a lot of things with JavaScript and it doesn't always scale with if you want really like like really fast, low latency uh, UI uh, user interfaces, experiences, if you want to have native access to all the kind of hardware layers and such, uh, it's, it's not always as easy. With, with Qt and QML, you kind of, you get um, easier, like the, quite quickly from this UI level, you get access to quite low level stuff if you need. Um, so our UI framework, um, so like I showed, it, it runs on, on uh, it's scalable. So when you are doing uh, embedded uh, or you work in a company, you work in the industry, and you're doing uh, maintaining a user interface asset. It's important that it's scalable. It might be that your hardware engineers come up and they say that they got a really bit, like much better deal on this new display. I'm sorry, it has different aspect ratio. So it has a bit different resolution. So um, for this rapid development, agile, agility, it's, it's, neat, it's important that kind of, even though you would be targeting only one device at some point, it, it's, uh, you, you build the asset so that you can e easily reuse it. And, like uh, selfies doesn't run on uh, watches uh, officially, but the, like the, we have had prototypes running on it and you can perfectly use it, it's finger usable. You can swipe using, use the gestures uh, just because like, uh, like it's, it's the user interface has been uh, developed as being scalable and responsive. Uh, so other properties, uh, we are quite strongly teamable. You can have like a business, uh, clean, serious uh, business in, uh, phone, or you can have like more like daring party, colorful party phone, kind of uh, make sure that this, um, like the yeah, wallpapers coloring, like the, <coughs> this user teamable assets, that they, they are kind of uh, fluid and separated from, from this kind of application code. Also, the, uh, we have separated quite well these kind of icons, fonts, and other assets. These don't normally, the user doesn't change. It's, these are more like when device manufacturer approaches us, if they want to have their own brand like uh, style icons or, or fonts, uh, we can do that quite, quite easily. Uh, of course, like if you're not selling a platform but doing a product, it is, uh, you don't necessarily need to care about these kind of things. So uh, don't worry, I'm not going to go through each of these, but this is kind of rough architecture of wh wh what we are doing. And uh, at the bottom, there's space layer. So there's Linux kernel, kernel and uh, different hardware drivers, like you have display, you have different radios. Um, what, what we do and what, like, I don't know, Ubuntu adopted after what we did, did it, and uh, other, like it, where this Linux world is kind of maybe moving is, is, is using Android drivers. So you have this light lip hybrid, thing called lip hybrid, which is kind of like a glue between the Linux and Android. And uh, m because Android is so popular, like most hardware manufacturers, if you make a camera or make a display or a, you make a chipset, you kind of provide drivers for, for Android. Um, and it used to be like, I don't know, one year project to move to a new chipset when, when, when in Nokia. It was like really expensive projects involving hundreds of engineers. Uh, and like, uh, for example, Yolla, we are too small to do that. And it, 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 getting like access to Qualcomm drivers, like it might cost like mi uh, millions of euros just to ca kind of see any documentation and, and specifications. So um, this this helps a lot for us. Like so, we this uh, we have a community around us, and there's like I don't know 40 devices I, or 30, 50. I don't remember the exact figure, but there's kind of there's all many devices uh, that have been ported uh, to selfies, so uh, like if you are using a Samsung or LG device or Motorola, it might be that you might may be able to run selfies on it, or some version of selfies. Not, not necessarily too polished, but it kind of, it calls might work, uh, like uh, video, video playback, multimedia, different things uh, uh, should, should work, but then you, you might miss something, some, some more commercial parts. Uh, so. We are open source, but there's also like, we need to license uh, map tiles and we need to license text input prediction databases. Uh, again, there's, when you're doing, uh, um, I don't even if you do, do um, forestry machines, like you, you graduate, you go to company to, to build a forestry machine. It might be that it, it has keyboard and they, it, it's used in China and then you need to do Chinese tech, uh, virtual keyboards there. Then you need to kind of also, you're kind of in the same place as we are, you need to license these technologies, you, uh, and 
like you are not going to do uh, like um, Chinese prediction database. Uh, you, you're going to fight, fight fight from somewhere else. But we try to keep as much as possible, uh, as much as we can uh, open source. So the next level is standard Linux. So there's um, so Red Hat Red Hat used to be uh, is kind of the I don't know it's, it's probably still is the like the biggest uh, like Linux distro li Linux operating system maker. Uh, and and a lot of the technologies they built they came kind of a standard. Uh, so there's the free desktop org, uh, organization which is kind of maintaining the standard uh, core of Linux. And and we are kind of using that as well. So you get o like almost any Linux device uses Pulse Audio for audio. They use T Pass for uh, interprocess communication, uh, G Streamer for multimedia. And and we are no different. So we we are quite we are I think we are excellent like uh, sta Linux citizens. Uh, as Linux distros go. Uh, problem with Linux is that uh, the server base, uh, it, it, it's, its background is in servers and, and background is in uh, desktop computers and a lot of the mobile stuff like uh, positioning maps, uh, cellular stack, uh, uh, Bluetooth, weren't there. So those kind of, that part we get, get from the Nokia heritage and in, from Intel. So what, and Intel is still like maintaining a lot of, lot of these stacks and we get upstream contributions from them. And then uh, one layer up, there's application middleware. And this is kind of uh, Linux, when you use Linux, you use GNOME or KDE desktops. Uh, and they are painful to use. They are not really like smooth. smooth uh, it's, it's not your Mac in, in, in any, 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 any stretch. So, there we couldn't use that much. Like Linux is really like solid choice for servers, but it's not solid choice for desktop uh, desktop experiences. But there are good par good parts. And 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 for example, our calendar is using KCal, which is what KD developed, and uh, and we, we are not doing the calendar backend ourselves. And uh, we are using Gecko Web View, so it's uh, a browser engine which is kind of used in Firefox, um, and and so on. And and kind of you get the picture. Like we like. We combine stuff. We don't really, as features go, they kind of come from these middleware components. And if, like, if you are doing um, embedded devices, you to do to go and do a car hard system, which is the companies now doing. Many companies in Finland doing that. They uh, like uh, working with car manufacturers. They kind of um, they'll probably use a lot of these components as well. Oh. Oops. The only part like we did too fully is the top part, top, top part, the user interface. So 20 applications, a uh, lot of different views. Okay, uh, so basics. So um, yeah, user interface is a, a nested hierarchy of items. Um, it used to be that you derived uh, functionality, like you derived, you used object-oriented programming and you derived features Problem with that is that it's not very scalable and it, it's, it's, it's very tightly coupling and, and, and you, um, you want to derive uh, from multiple different sources and so the composition, like this kind of tree composition is, is, is much better way to like um, enable code reuse and, 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 and make, make it like easy to like uh, build user interfaces. Uh, a lot of this you don't see. So the, the, on the left you can see that like very rough like example view where you have a list of items. You have a search uh, on the top. You have toolbar at the bottom. Um, a lot of the item just uh, it items in the structure they are invisible. So only the developer uh, kind of sees it. But there's like one one there's this scroll area. So there's a one item one parent item. If you put something in the parent item, you can scroll it or you can pinch zoom the, that that content. And you get kind of these kind of uh, capabilities from these containers, and and the child notes, the uh, leaf notes, they are kind of the visual elements, like uh, buttons and uh, icons and and, and different uh, descriptive descriptive labels. And uh, okay, one possible example of this kind of uh, parent container invisible item is layout layout uh, layout item. So um, I try to kind of roughly show here like different kind of like the ba most most basic layouts. But like if you do user interfaces, it's mostly lists. It's vertical list, it's horizontal list. It's a nested collection of of, of lists. So uh, grids 
already like 10, like 90% is a list, and then you get grid. It is already much like not that common. There's, uh, maybe there's like the pint interest uh, did this kind of flow grid layout thing. That's maybe kind of some, some like more kind of complex layout that that's kind of popular nowadays. But uh, because it allows like you to have larger item size for important items and 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 and. And, and, and depending on the content, you can kind of have dynamic item sizes, but it's in mostly it's just a list. So like nothing fancy in layout side. Um, and when you stack elements to, together, it's Im alignment is important. So if there's a uh, difference in the user interface, if there's in inconsistencies in the user, user interface, uh, they need to be meaningful, like complexity, there needs to be a reason for complexity, like, uh, and one way to calm down the interface is, is, is make sure stuff aligns. And, and there's, it is not, you can like easily read it from top, top to, uh, left to right, top to bottom, and um, so um, it doesn't mean that when you do the user interface development that you would always have layout grid on top of that. It is more, it means that the uh, core components and basic components where the Lego blocks that you, you start with they kind of follow the common parameters. And when you use the common components in the right way, you, it will guarantee that things are aligning. So um, here is a couple of uh, example mobile views. Uh, so there's no, not that many icons and there's no text showing, but you can probably guess which, what some of those are. Um, and okay. If, if I went through, if you went through most of those, a lot of that is would be just lists, lists like nested lists. Uh, there's a list item which is a, a list view which is a vertical, and then uh, inside the list item you have horizontal list. Uh, so, yeah, um, there's a couple of views that are more complex, like uh, like showing media, uh, multimedia, showing uh, cam uh, maps, and and web view. The, the browser content. So uh, th this kind of like browser is own own needs own uh, browser engine. Uh, it, it's kind of a UI framework within a UI framework, and that's that's something you normally kind of get from uh, elsewhere. Also mapping, like if you are doing a, I don't know, this forestry machine user interface, you, you need to often you need to show maps, but like you, you want to get to that ma mapping data from somewhere else, and and so. So you kind of the map, you get these maps uh, implementation often from like companies like here or or, or Google or uh, TomTom or uh, so that's that's like and and media uh, multimedia is is is, the, is goes very low low level and hard, uh, like playing like full HD video or something like that it's it's uh, it's it's a special case but mostly like other otherwise like. If, if you do QML UI development, kind of, uh, if you can do one of those, you can do all of the others. So there's kind of like there's no specialty in like making making an email application versus making a, a phone application. Uh, yeah, the, more about scalability. So just there's a couple of screens. Uh, so if you have a small screen, you maybe can you can only show like uh, one view at a time. If you have larger screen, you can see so more content. Um, on, on phones, tablets, kind of the actions are at the bottom of the screen, so they are easily finger and uh, that, uh, finger usable. Like you can access them without stretching too much. On desktop, like you normally have mouse or trackpad, and, and there actually that like the top left corner is, is, is maybe easier. The touch target doesn't have to be that big. Um, again, like this might be like one code implementation that it just when it's phone, it decides to load only one view. And when it's a tablet, it decides to load it on, on like side by side. Um, okay, so that's really quick, like basics of mobile user interfaces. Uh, let's talk about the process. So uh, this is not indicative of what, what we have in Yolla. We have more people, but uh, this is more like, uh, like relatively. So in games, you have visual designers a lot. You have like different texture artists and and animators and um, like modelers and, and, and level designers. In user interfaces, the user's content is the key. So you don't have that much graphics and, and visual stuff. Like you want to want to have clean and calm user interface. So um, maybe like 
the most of the design is in the interaction design, like thinking about like the different user flows and uh, th th think about different uh, error cases and and, and uh, testing testing different different uh, solution ideas. Um, the UI developer, uh, like we, I said, we did, don't do that much middleware ourselves, so we have a lot of like people in the user interface side. And I, I want to talk about UI developers. Like it is, when I started. Um, uh, starting like I don't know, 15 years ago, uh, I, I'm really envious when I look at your like how many different user interface courses you have, both on the design side and the technical side. It's uh, it used to be much, much, much less, and 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 there used to be this thinking that like if you are a developer, kind of you can develop anything. If you know the, the, like there's job description asking for C++ developer, and like if you are doing a network protocols or if you're doing user interfaces, they require a completely different set of skills. Of course, you need to know <coughs> how, how to uh, write C++, but uh, um, it, like, it's like you know how to write, then you can write a good, good book, cookbook, uh, uh, food, uh, how do you make good food? You, that's not the case. Like, uh, you also need to uh, be able to make great, tasty food. Um, yeah, so, the, so, a couple of experts I want to, want to highlight. Uh, of course, when you are a small company, you cannot kind of have these many people uh, on your payroll. But uh, ideally, you have localization experts. So that's kind of um, there's so many different writing scripts and uh, numbering systems and, and how, how dates and, and calendars are handled and, and, and that it, it's nice to have a like person who has half foot in this kind of. Uh, cultures and, and languages and, and half food in the technology side. Uh, graphics developer, so you, um, is kind of the guy who knows, or, or, or gal who knows uh, OpenGL and shaders and low level graphics. So um, most of the people who build user interfaces, they don't kind of pro work on that low level, but uh, you need to, need to be kind of, um, you optimize the pipeline so that the experience is smooth and fluid and and even like if, if you are not doing a like um, iPhone quality user interface, I think like even small comp smaller like industry players they should more put uh, focus on this. Like um, it, it, it breaks the experience and, and, and uh, dilutes their brand value if they have like uh, lousy they provide a lousy experience. Uh, then quickly about the process, this is very simplified and uh, bit too waterfally for the reality. But uh, how do we? develop like a feature. So first the designer, interaction designer takes, uh, gets, um, like analyzes the area, evaluates competition, does concepts, they do a couple of, they always do multiple designs. Even though, we, even if you know that this one design is probably what you want, uh, the exercise of doing multiple different designs, you often, it, it will improve the, the one that you kind of then chose. And then the design team will kind of uh, evaluate together, brainstorm, uh, criticize, and, and then they, they have an initial design ready. Um, and it, yeah, this is simplified. Often it might be that the feature idea comes from the developer and not the designer, but anyway. Uh, then the developer implements the feature, um, and then quite quickly after the first version, they start iterating it with the design. And the design often goes through, of course, phases at the, that time, and, and the output of that is different, are, are, are prototypes. And, and the result of that is that uh, you kind of um, have the design kind of uh, uh, finished or, or like uh, in, in good shape. And then you start to maturize it. Uh, we have a definition of done criteria where kind of uh, things that like uh, feature needs to meet like performance wise, pixel perfection, what, what not, different, different requirements that it needs to meet before we can merge it to master code line. Uh, we do a lot of reviewing, so user experience reviewing and code reviewing. Uh, then um, uh, we test testers will do exploratory testing around, around to it, uh, some like regression testing. And once kind of everybody's happy uh, and we agree that it's, it's kind of finished, feature complete, we merge it to ma uh, master code line. Yeah. Uh, so then uh, it's uh, like, in the next morning, everybody coming to work, update their devices in the company, they start, they get the new feature, yay. They, need, they start to using it, they give feedback. We do uh, early adopt uh, this kind of uh, early releases for, for uh, co uh, we have a group called CPTA. This is kind of, this kind of, uh, our fans maybe, fans, uh, 
people are interested in your line, they, and, and they, they get, it, get the releases earlier, and they give us really good, good valuable feedback. They are they're often really critical, but that's a, that's a good thing. You, you want opinionated feedback. And um, then, like, uh, we respond to that. With, uh, define like uh, select like these are the release blockers these we need to fix these issues that are arose through the long term longer term usage of the uh, feature uh, and and after those blockers have been fixed we kind of it's 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 ready for a release and after release uh, we have um, uh, we get community and customer feedback so we have a website called togetheryola.com where uh, like community can File issues, uh, improvement suggestions, and then they, there's a voting system, so they can vote that what what features are uh, and improvements are important to them. And we then take take those in, in, into development. Of course, like we are small company, so there's there's, a lot, there's some of the re requests would require like 100 million investment, and we cannot do it just based on some one person asking. Yep. Uh, sure. Um, so you can take, for example, like some examples from, from the design flow that you have. Actually, I, I have a later part. Uh, like I'm like this kind of theory part. So later part, I'm 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 kind of show a couple of like mock-up designs and. Okay, maybe you can like elaborate there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And and we can like if that didn't cover, we can discuss after that. Um, ah, cool. Yeah. The early adopters, but uh, how do you like? Uh, how have you gathered the, the people for the early adopters? Are there like volunteers or? Um, yeah. So, so we have community mailing lists and and and, and forums and 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 then kind of uh, okay. Initially, we picked picked a group of people, and now th now there's a process where, where you can apply for 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 this in, uh, early adopter status. Um, we like send devices also to them, um, so uh, it's, it's often like this open source world. So there's people who also contribute on the on on, on, on the on the software we do uh, the open parts of it, and 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 you kind of like see that somebody is really helpful, and then you can ask like would, would they want to be in, inside the inner circle in a way. Okay. Yeah. If someone would like to participate with that, are there possibilities in the case of uh, your life changes? Yeah, definitely. So uh, there is a lively community, um, and um, there's this uh, a community meeting uh, on IRC every week uh, on was it Monday. Um, if you t join them, like mailing lists, they, w they will send you email about it, like on the what's the next meeting and what, what is going to be discussed. A bit one problem, like from design perspective, uh, is that this, uh, this uh, a lot of these community and open source communities, especially, they are quite techni techni technology driven and, and, and like that. There are more designers nowadays, more more de and more developers who care about design. But it's, um, uh, but of course, we would like love to have designers there as well. Okay, just one question. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, good question. So um, I think quality is important, and like if you don't do feature well, uh, the initial feedback and, and adoption for that feature is gonna like sink. Like you need to kind of uh, you need to get it in a certain level, maybe. Then 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 uh, like like I don't know. You have an idea of of a like nice new. UX pattern or a gesture or what whatnot. If you do it lousy, everybody's gonna hate it, even if it, it would have some idea, good idea. But um, so 
this is kind of like I'm an engineer and I want to do like make sure that the f like whatever we put in the main goal line that actually works. Um, we do kind of uh, we should and we have been discussing that we kind of would expose people to these uh, not so ready features earlier. Um, but in, in, in all in all, like we do monthly releases, so we do like, like if you compare to, I don't know, Apple and Google, they do like yearly releases. So kind of we, we do, um, th this is kind of still quite fast cycle, cycle of, of, of development. O of course, the, um, at, at least this, this kind of the lower parts, this, this maturization parts. I have battery, but, uh, should be charging, but anyway. Yeah, um, but this is kind of, um, of course, it's it's uh, circular and it's it's not linear and and, and it is not this waterfall. This is kind of kind of like you get a rough idea of what we do. Like if there's a bigger feature, like we do, did new, we rehauled the whole user experience for the Selfies 2.0, something we call Selfies 2.0. Uh, when we did a tablet, we kind of noticed that the phone UI we did earlier didn't really scale to that. So we, uh, there we did a lot of prototypes and, and we involved kind of, we did four different tablet um, uh, home screens and then we did user studies on, on people who didn't have any previous experience on, 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 on our products. And then kind of based on that feedback, we chose, chose the design and there we did kind of more kind of uh, earlier uh, work. On the other hand, like when we are, when we are doing a new feature, like um, I don't know, we do, did scientific mode for our calculator. You kind of can derive from existing existing designs and uh, competition, and like uh, so, kind of you you can um, do nice nice design already, like much easier than than, than maybe uh, uh, if there was no prior art. More questions. Okay, culture. So uh, this may be obvious, but if you like see most uh, industry user interfaces, I mean, Finnish companies, they, they are quite horrible. So um, the time you, you implement a feature, like you get first working version of a feature, it's, it's most of the, uh, from my experience at least, it's, it can, can be like 80% of the effort. So sweating the layouts to be pixel perfect, the animation smooth, that's, that's kind of, you shouldn't maybe skim on that. You should kind of uh, sweat the details and, and, and kind of uh, uh, tune the experience at the end. Uh, even if you're a small company and you are financially restricted, kind of, uh, um, this is so critical for the success of your product. Uh, one good way to mature that is, is peer review. So, um, like as far as I know that like the reviewing is the kind of the best way to bring quality into a product. So not the auto testing and uh, regression testing or, or uh, it's, it's more like you kind of, you have designers and, and developers reviewing uh, a feature. So when we have a feature, uh, we call something like pull request. This is a feature that's kind of a candidate to be merged. And there, there we have a commenting section and there's a lively discussion of developers kind of uh, look, looking at the code and commenting that uh, uh, whether some layout matches our style principles and, and so on. And developers also care about design. Uh, also the designers kind of review the ready-made implementation and, and iterate. And this, this reviewing kind of, um, yeah, I, 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 like if you do it properly, I, I think it's, it's, it's kind of the key, key to quality. Um, what it also gives us uh, gives easier kind of um, way for others to understand each other's code uh, when you constantly review each other. Uh, thing about user interfaces, like I said earlier, is that uh, they are quite similar between different applications, different views. Uh, it used to be in Nokia that you had like email team, and email team had a developer who's responsible for certain views of the of the application, and that doesn't work because. Um, that person might not be the best in layouts, might not be visually oriented. Uh, so like we, when we do uh, fix in password field in selfies, we go through all the 40 passwords that the developer who fixes that field also fixes all the 40 other fi the, uh, password fields in other applications. So there's no ownership of, of like 
um, of course the person kind of there's behalf responsibilities and person responsible for email if you do changes to email they, they need to review that that it doesn't break like email email functionality but um, um, yeah so shared ownership is I think is important um, agility, agility I guess you been in different courses that now nowadays this is old uh, for a long time has been older age uh, so uh, you want kind of you want to be able to move fast and uh, so basically th for these designs design layouts mockups uh, they are like a way of communicating if they are not maintained as such so um, like well after after we have implemented things the implementation is kind of the specification how things should behave uh, you don't want to do like everything twice uh, like maintain the implementation in the specification and implementation in the uh, in the device um, yeah uh, another way to look at the reviewing is exploratory testing I could say like eat your own on dog food so uh, it might be difficult in forestry machines but um, but still um, kind of uh, often the testing is, is more of like a regression testing and testing these happy fats but the prob problem there is that the developer already uh, who implemented the feature they tested the happy fat what 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 the, uh, is valuable in testing is that you kind of try to try to think what what the dev uh, uh, ori original developer didn't think about all the different cases um, this is shorter than the real definition of done but here kind of uh, again um, I think performance is critical so that's um, like that there's no stutters and, 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 and things things happen semi instantly um, I could like go I would love to go in deep like uh, like what how do you make good performance but um, that, that would be like own separate presentation um, okay so yeah okay So um, yeah, so when um, when first version of the features implemented, uh, uh, we have like a thing called feature branches, and the develop uh, designer enables the feature branch on on their device and tries out the feature themselves, and then they often like uh, they provide feedback to the developer what improvements they should make. If it uh, requires new design, then they make new. Uh, uh, layout mockups and an, or animations, uh, animation clips that they send sent to the developer, um, and then they review it again and um, it's uh, yeah iterate until until it's, it's ready. So Quite simple. Yeah. Okay. So I uh, okay. The, uh, the uh, yeah, I, I mentioned earlier like when when doing the designs the design team gathers around and, and they, they brainstorm and they uh, review each other's designs and they like they have a meeting weekly meeting and the, then the um, is the designer might come up with like I did, did this and what do you think um, but um, I'm not sure how much I can open it I'm an engineer I don't participate on those meetings but um, so uh, I, I could show some photos, maybe. Um, if I can find it. So they use wall a lot. So they kind of have, have flows. They have put comment comments there. They try to like to print out their designs. Then, um, yeah, they try out. Try out, try out the, uh, the feature. Uh, they have like uh, competition, competitor devices. They try out and, and see how, how they work. Um, I should have our chief de uh, designer, Martin School, here to explain more in more detail. Um, and yeah. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Cheers. Okay, selfies. Uh, here we have th th really simple applications, but a uh, what, what couple of examples selfish applications. Uh, they are simple because 
I, I needed to get them running inside my presentation, and I cannot put phone application running here, uh, and I don't have a network. But um, there's this weather application showing uh, different weather locations. Uh, there's calculator application and a simple file manager. And um, uh, with for the weather, I, I, I can, I'm later going to show like the kind of the original design mockup of, of that. Uh, here are all the views we did. So currently, uh, this is already old, so we probably have some more views. But to make an operating system, you need 250, 300 views. Um, we are only like dozen UI developers, so kind of there's a lot of work to do and maintain. Um, the where user daily is uh, in the top right. There's this home screen where there's your running applications and the log screen. That's like what the developer, uh, the user mostly sees. They mostly like never see other other views. Uh, when you are doing design and when you are doing development, a lot of times you are do doing these settings views where you can kind of set up your Wi-Fi and, and Bluetooth and connect to other devices and, and sign into accounts. And uh, that's kind of the most of the work. The, the, of course, we put much more effort in these common views. And like we have rewritten tutorial, for example, uh, the important app areas we have rewritten like dozens of times. And, uh, and like you, we do spend much much time there, but there's kind of there's a lot of lot of UI to be uh, work, uh, to do. Like the first time experience when people get the device, the to the, the top uh, left part there's like 20 views for the startup wizard uh, guiding user how to set up the device. We have another like 10, 15 views for the tutorial uh, guiding user to learn that the uh, interaction principles in our uh, our devices. How do you and uh, answer calls, dismiss alarms, how do you uh, jump between applications, what, what's the na navigation paradigm in, in our platform. And, and in the middle part, it, a lot of it is settings, different, different uh, hardware features, radios, whatnot, well, how do you configure those. And, um, but in act actuality, all the views are quite simple uh, in, in a way that this is kind of selfish uh, UI in, in a way. Here are the UI components running. Uh, so uh, all, all of that, the, what I previously saw is just like a, it's, these are the Lego building blocks we kind of uh, composed all the views. Um, so there's, there's labels, different labels, like you, uh, you have error labels, you have uh, headers, uh, body text, you have uh, like in, for interact action, you have different menus with actions. Uh, you have buttons. On, on the center uh, uh, column, you there's these different indicators like uh, busy indicators, uh, some kind of uh, hints like how how do you use gestures, uh, progress indicators. And and on 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 the right, uh, there's um, again settings requires much. So there's different what you need for forms. So yeah, number input, uh, password input. Uh, like different switches, combo boxes, how do you do single selection, multi selection. Um, and these need to be scalable and these need to be in really good quality and they need to uh, perform uh, really uh, well, they need to be pixel perfect. And as long as these are used in the right way in those applications, the, um, the whole should be consistent and, and nice. And, and when you have a problem, you always, uh, like error case, you try to always solve it with the same, same component and same like, you, like UX pattern. Um, large companies have the problem that they kind of, the, each application st starts to like deviate from the common and they try to start to uh, solve things differently. And that's bad for the UX and it's bad for the uh, scalability of the assets and, 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 and the, uh, main adds to the maintenance effort. Um, so uh, the UI components are the building blocks of the of the uh, selfish operating system user interface. Uh, the building blocks of the UI components are are, the, are these different constants. So um, in Nokia times, there used to be that even one application or or uh, or one UI component might have like 20 different parameters. You want to keep this set as small as possible so that you don't kind of uh, you're, you, you, you can f focus on the experience and not on these kind of complexities you, you create for yourself in, in, in during the development. So um, most of these are like uh, 
inter integer multiplies of each other, so which guarantees kind of align alignment and, uh, and, 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 and visually nice, nice, nice result. Um, we only have a couple of like different colors, so we have uh, primary color for uh, interactive items and then highlight color for uh, non-interactive items and also if you, you press an uh, interactive item there's uh, for pressing, selecting, uh, highlighting an item we, we use, use this highlight color. Um, yeah, so even this kind of, I, I wish we had less, less than this, like uh, later on it's add, add to the effort uh, of, of, of maintaining and scaling the asset. I, I wish we had, had even, even less, less, less uh, constants and, and, and values than, than we have now. Um, sorry about the rendering, I don't know if you, okay. You don't even see it, but uh, it's broken. So, um, so we have the, uh, then we have the uh, few graphic designers, a uh, big part of their job is doing, doing, doing uh, icons. So um, we have small icons for different indicators. They are not finger usable. They're more like you have an email item. You can show that there's an at attachment part of that email or, or uh, there's a uh, star to mark it as a, something is a favorite. Um, the medium icons, most of our icons are, are uh, this medium size and they are used in this kind of normal list items, grid items that are like finger usable. Uh, that's like 60% of the icons or more. Uh, large icons more for like, I don't know, in I don't know, music player, the uh, audio controls like play, pause, they are kind of mo the most important actions you can have there. You want to highlight them, then you use, use larger icon, for icon, icon size. And then we have a couple of categories are, are maybe more related to or specific to, to sales, but um, uh, for other assets, uh, I used wallpapers as examples. It's not that they are the most important thing, but uh, when, when you are doing gathering the different assets, uh, we have this various ways you can go, go around it. So uh, we, we, some of the stuff we kind of rendered, like with After Effects, there's this, this different renderings. Uh, then there's, um, okay, we wanted to break the digital, digital feel and, and, and kind of did some hand, hand painted stuff. Um, if you have resources, of course, you can do studio, studio assets. So this, um, this is uh, not only wallpapers, but also this, this kind of billboard graphics. You go to store and you want to advertise something. I just used these wallpapers as an example. Uh, if you are a small company and what you want to do often is that you don't draw everything yourself. Uh, here is kind of, for example, a photo we took from Flickr, which has Creative Commons, Commons uh, license. So um, you want to reuse as much as possible, but uh, of course you don't want to do it too much so you don't lo lose the, the, um, brand identity and the iconicness of, of, of your, of, of your uh, product. Uh, and on the right side, there's some community provided us, us graphics, which is uh, wallpapers, which was nice. And here's kind of, you might have heard this somewhere, it's Yolla ringtone, it's maybe the most popular sound we have. We don't have a full-time job for sound designer and most user interfaces, most pro software products don't have. Um, but these we have like subcontracted from uh, like artists and that's kind of you want this is kind of important that you don't use some stock stock clips and audios but, but it kind of yeah you so this is sound effects um, ringtones message tones um, on, on the device there's probably like I don't know 20 effects and maybe 40 tones we have in, in, in the platform. And those have been like subcontracted and for, for part time in certain certain time. Uh, fonts, fonts are really important. Okay, if you are doing uh, embedded, your product is running on Linux, uh, the, it's, 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 um, the, the quality of fonts in Linux site is not that good. Uh, it, it's really hard to get like, uh, like coverage for the all different variety of scripts in, in that you need in the world. Um, with Latin Latin uh, scripts like what's what's used in 
Americas, Europe, uh, Australia, Africa, most of the Africa, uh, they, you can already survive it's two thirds of the world is writing with that. Um, but then um, even if you, I don't know, your, your product is being sold in France, it might be that there's Arabic users there and, and, and they, they, they want to type their names and uh, the messages and, and such with, 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 with uh, Arabic script. So kind of y y even if you don't target Arabic countries or markets, you, you still need, need to provide these. And uh, we had, uh, when you, uh, it's a lot of work goes, goes into this. In small company, you cannot make, make the typography yourself. So the, a lot of the, like what we use are creative, com uh, again, like free license. Uh, fonts that we can use freely. If you are doing devices, the license terms are different than if you are doing developing an application. So what's free for application developers? Like if you're doing Android or iOS apps, uh, you often get the different kind of language scripts for like from the platform. And, uh, and, and like Google and Apple and those, they spend a lot of like money and effort in, in uh, making sure that there's, there are these different se serif, sans serif, uh, light bulb fonts uh, for you to use. Uh, when you're doing Linux embedded development or Linux devices, um, that's not the case. Like you kind of have to put more effort there yourself and, and like work on aligning the uh, line heights and, and making sure that the uh, font width uh, weights are, 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 are aligned between different languages when people, like it's one paragraph might often has uh, fonts from different writing systems. Okay, so here's a um, like mock-up of the uh, weather application. So this is a design mock-up made with uh, Illustrator. So I earlier showed you the weather application. So the, um, if I had network, I could have shown other views, but the top, uh, top left view there, you can see this, this uh, your current weather, uh, and, and then you have different weather locations showing. Uh, so this uh, designer has like created layout, uh, Layouts from uh, dif different uh, ready-made, like selfish uh, UI components, stencils, combined different elements, uh, cre created uh, some new new vec uh, vector icons, and then um, uh, then uh, on, on the bottom part there's more like descriptions of how things should behave, and, and then some kind of guidance uh, for, for example, layouts how you how you should position the elements, on uh, and this is kind of developer received this and, and made the first implementation. It doesn't mean that the it doesn't mean that the before that developer didn't talk with the designer or anything like that. It's, it's not it's not not like that, but um, yeah. Uh, the designers use yeah, Illustrator is, is kind of the tool of choice and, and after, uh, after effects for animations. So for animations here is kind of like before we worked on the tablet that uh, there's kind of this after effects. Of course, these are used also for marketing purposes and, and, and often for uh, like, uh, as a design documentation, these motion designs, they are often quite much shorter than this example. But basically like uh, it's highlighting and giving a feel for the de developer what, what they need, need to implement. Of course, the, the actual implementation, the developer needs to think about a lot of different states and this is kind of really like the happy path only. So the developer needs also to like kind of be uh, know how to do animations and know how to do to nice visuals. Okay, um, how much time do we have? Okay. So um, next uh, a live live coding session. So, so I'm gonna show you a bit like how do you develop with uh, develop selfies and, and Qt and QML. Basically, if you use QML framework and Qt technology, uh, like if you would have done um, applications for BlackBerry, you would do use quite similar uh, set of tools. So here's my workspace. Uh, I only have one small picture there. Uh, and here is my command line. It's showing the same picture. Let's make uh, a QML code file. 
and then execute that. And you don't see anything because uh, there's, there is uh, nothing in the file yet. So what we need to do is we import functionality. So Qt Quick is uh, QML, uh, it's Qt Quick are the visual elements and uh, interaction elements that you use to compose user interfaces. And uh, one element there is image element. And I can say that uh, show that PNG file like that. And then uh, uh, here is like very simple QML uh, application, if you will. Um, it's not doing much. Let's make it interactive. So let's create a touch area. Um, you have something called anchors to um, layout stuff. So you said that something is on the right, aligns to the right of certain element or a top or it's centered horizontally vertically. You can get this different layout uh, uh, definitions. And then we say that when you tap the touch area, for example, then you toggle the visibility of the uh, image element, like this. So now we have an interactive application. What you don't want to do that, up, uh, uh, like these kind of abrupt animations, what you want to do is to have a nice smooth, smooth state transition. So here, now I have defined that when the opacity changes, it's, it's, it's getting, it's animated with this number animation element. And uh, you get kind of all the visual primitives. Uh, most of the user interfaces, they are text, like 70% is just text. And then, then you have some images. Uh, the images are often bitmaps because that's what the system is fast at processing. You don't do SVGs and, and vector graphics. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are slow. You, uh, you show bitmaps, you do show, show text. Uh, you have some graphical effects. Uh, some procedural graphics, but but not not that much. Um, so basically, the, by, by the time you have some graphic assets on the de device, it's it's already optimized for that that view, so that it when you start the application, it loads immediately and it doesn't do any uh, unnecessary work. Um, then uh, the, so Qt provides this kind of uh, non-styled uh, base to build any kind of touch uh, uh, touch uh, ex uh, experience or application. Um, one, one, for selfish, uh, you then need to import selfish UI components that are called selfish silica. And uh, we have a convention that all the, uh, all the applications have this application window at the root, which means that the, it, it provides orientation handling, it provides uh, different kind of services for the, um, for the application. I need to restart the application because the window size changed. Okay. Uh, in device, you would see wallpaper here, but I have just black wallpaper for, for, for the contrast. So I can here create a button that says hello world. Like that. Uh, and then I can put it on inside the layout. So uh, QML has different layout classes. This, this is just a vertical list. Okay, that doesn't look too good. So let's add some spacing. So here I, I'm, I'm now starting to use this theme object, which, which I showed earlier. Um, so so I, I get these, these parameters from, from this. Uh, our, our UI component library has this uh, standard padding value, standard different uh, layout values. So uh, when I have items that are um, position items, I add spacing that use, uses uh, spacing called padding large. Uh, and these are textual buttons. I can also I can change them to uh, graphical buttons, where I, then I need to define the source of the. source of the uh, icon, and, uh, and I can make a simple uh, audio controls here. 
like that. So now uh, I, I changed the layout class from vertically stacking column to a horizontally stacking row. And um, let's make it again a bit more interactive. So you can have a playing state. And when user clicks, uh, taps the button, then it switches between the playing playing and post states. So this is uh, JavaScript I'm writing inside this structure. So if you know how to do HTML uh, coding de development with JavaScript, you, you are kind of at home. I'm we're at wrong way around. Okay, now I can tap on the middle button and, and switch between playing and post state. Uh, and yeah, so you have layouts, layout classes, and, and then you have visual items at the, at, 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 at the leaves. Uh, when you uh, define like a big application with multiple different views, it, uh, having this everything in here, it, it starts to kick uh, become quite unwieldy. So no, normally you have different uh, these QML code files for each, each uh, different uh, view of the application. Uh, I'm not going to write everything in one file just because this is a live coding session and I, I don't have too much time. Uh, also, um, uh, it, it initiates everything I write here and that's not good. Like I, I only want to initiate like what user sees at, at the first. And, and no, normally, like what you do is you divide uh, the application in something we call pages. So pages is a one full screen view. Uh, so instead of creating it, uh, the layout just here, I create this in, invisible container called uh, called page. Now I have a page. You don't see much. Let's create a list list view there. Um, so list view shows stuff you can have in a database or a, uh, it, it shows, shows data from some source and, and, and then uh, layouts it on, on, the, on the screen. A list is a, can be horizontal, vertical list. There's different kind of these view elements. Uh, this is a UI presentation, so I'm just going to make, make a fake model here. So just say that initiate 20 items and please initiate uh, 20 list items. Now. Uh, I forgot to define the size of the list view. Okay, so here uh, I actually have 20 items. Uh, let's add a label so we actually see something. Again, I, I use this uh, common uh, values to position the list item. Okay, so here I have uh, 20 list items. Uh, the layouts, of course, the of this delegate item, this uh, can can be more complex. Uh, it can be grid, what what not. But um, this is kind of this basic structure is, is is present in most in if not most in no, well most most views we have. You can have like. Um, so it's uh, unstable code. It keeps crashing. It, our devices don't crash, it's just this environment, sorry. Uh, so here, uh, you c nice thing about the views is that they only load visible items. So I can have here 200,000 item model, and uh, because it only creates these 11 items you see now, um, uh, it, it, it scales, scales nicely to that. Then, uh, uh, of course, like, uh, you, okay, you have defined now the first view of your application. Um, it may be that it doesn't load immediately, uh, and in, the, in, the, in that case, you need to implement a busy state. So what you do is uh, you want to show, for example, a busy indicator. Let's make the li list not visible for a while. Oops. 
Okay, here I have a PC indicator. So, um, so we have a model, for example, that um, takes one second to load. You have, I don't know, a website that takes loading. It, is, it has something, uh, it fetches some data from network. It takes some time to load. Let's make a fake model that uh, just takes second to load. And once it's ready, Yeah, so I actually forgot to mention this. So like, I was thinking of showing different kind of, uh, like you need, when you do applications, you do, do the, to the layouts, uh, you map the layouts to uh, certain actions, and then you need to handle uh, different special cases. Like uh, first, like when the user first starts to use the uh, application, you need to have a, like some kind of hints and tutorial telling them like what, 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 what they should do if, it's just, if that's not instantly obvious. Uh, then you need uh, when stuff loads, you need to show loading indication, like like like, like I showed here. Um, uh, you need to have an error handling, and I'm kind of like I just went through showing the, 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 some of these uh, things how you would do them in selfies without telling you what I'm doing. Sorry. Um, uh, maybe I just keep this piece indicator part. I just show so um, menus. So when you have a view, you have menu, you, have, you can do actions on the item and you can do actions on the like global actions uh, related to that application. Uh, the primary action when you is when you tap an item. So you have an item, you have photo, the primary action of tapping a photo is opening the photo in full screen. Uh, tapping a call, uh, call log entry is the primary action is making a call. Uh, then you have secondary actions and those you define um, in context menu uh, in our case. So you have you can have a couple of context menu actions. Called menu item. So here I long press an item and I get uh, these secondary actions. Um, so uh, then, if I want to do global actions, we have something in selfies we call uh, fully menu, and it, it, it similarly it has these menu items. you define there. So here, uh, these global actions I can, uh, so in, in phone application, you can open a dialer. Dialer in um, messages applications, you can send a new message. And uh, then this is just a one page. Uh, then if you want to open new pages, like we, let's do a settings page. When, when you activate the icon, you, it opens settings page, and we create here a component called settings, settings page. So now here we activate the settings, and it opens a new page. Um, with the settings page, I'm kind of a bit so like how you would de uh, define, uh, how, it, how do you stack, stack like items uh, that look a bit different to, to from each other, like how do you do something so like settings form? So like like I showed earlier, that they, we have these columns. So I, I say that, okay, I want to initiate now items that are vertically stacked to uh, all the, to, first I need to tell the user where they are. So I'm saying that you are now on the settings page. Um, so for some reason the Top part is a bit clipped in the in, in, in uh, with, with this pro projector, but um, the margin margin is there's some mar margin missing there. So uh, then 
the most common text setting you can have is a switch, on off switch. Um, so, so here we have, we have a switch. Uh, so this is for uh, like in settings you you you, you have uh, you go to Bluetooth settings and you can have Bluetooth on or off. Then uh, you want to so control the visibility of that Bluetooth. Then you need may need more choices. Then then you then for that you uh, need to define a, multi a combo box which shows multiple different selections. And here, we, okay, this looks bad, but uh, here, here is here is a uh, simple combo box. Then, I'll show a couple of other. I, I'm almost done. So, I guess you get the idea of like how how this property based interface works. Uh, most of the like namings of the APIs are aligned, so kind of. If you know how to use use the uh, one component, it's it's quite logical how to use the next one. So here I'm creating a couple of text text fields. So. So you have username field and uh, password fields, which allows you to toggle the password, visibility of the password. When, once you get uh, your view starts to have more content, uh, you kind of, it, the, like you see, it's not that readable anymore. So what you want to do is you divide that into a sections. So the page header is no longer enough, you then define You need to define a, a, a sex, divide it into a sections, for example. Okay, so uh, like I use column a lot, a row a lot. This this like simple uh, st stacking stuff vertically, horizontally. You um, define um, define these uh, ap applications with these these common components and. Like you see, there's not much visual style in this com this, this application code. Like it, the menu, it, it might look like an iPhone menu or an Android menu. It, it might, the context menu might, might work or be activated differently. This is, this is kind of, uh, in here I map the applications model and applications like features in, in, in the selfish UI, but the actual like uh, how those buttons work and how those combo boxes behave, they are in the, in the, in the, in the common components. If I if I show like for example our button how it looks, um, so here's here's our button component. So we have mouse area which handles the touch. Uh, we have uh, like color overlay on top of that, uh, and then we show a label. And so here's how how would you do do a button? If I would now change this code, all the uh, devices here the button would then look different. If I would uh, like, I don't know, add some bevel to it or something, some, something that sounds like a bad idea. Okay, thank you. Okay, any questions uh, from any, any of you about this? How does it look like uh, from your perspective? Do you think that this kind of, let's say, scripting of user interfaces, uh, does it appear Because this is, uh, I, I think that one of the uh, ways how you can then uh, uh, work with the assignments uh, for the course as well. Uh, think, uh, thinking of the interactivity in the user interface, 
if it's a mobile device, uh, then, then it can be left. My, uh, okay. If you don't have questions, then I have a couple of uh, I them. Do. Okay, <laughs> there is one. Good. Maybe, maybe in general, maybe you can tell a little about, like, about the future of your lab in your mind. Okay. Um, so we haven't been in the uh, Finnish news that much now. Um, like we did this consumer devices, but our like main customers are our companies, so like like Index or or Turing or um, so uh, so like our main business is is, is to license the operating system forward. Uh, we are maybe now more targeting like uh, government business uh, side of the things. So uh, the first wo first version was more like business business orient oriented. Um, we have like projects ongoing. I can talk talk to you about. Um, so uh, we are still quite small, um, but I think like the our technology offering and know how is we have a solid solid offering offering here and uh, like if we get like a big enough partner to work work with us. And then we have some, some uh, like we can then scale this, scale this up and, and, and challenge, challenge the uh, bigger players. Um, so, like, it's it's, it's not going to be like on, on your grandma's de uh, device of choice any anytime soon. Of course, like when when like things progress and this platform maturizes, it opens up new, new possibilities. Like we are now like focusing on, 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 on security and, and, and uh, we are all the time adding new features. Like last, last week's uh, release, we added uh, conference calling and uh, um, FM radio and uh, scientific calculator, which we were like asked by our customer and, uh, and, and we, the touring we did fingerprint sensor, so you can, you can like, uh, Unlock the device with fingerprint. So, uh, as long as we have these paying customers, we can keep adding these features, and 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 and, and it will open open up doors. There's a lot of the kind of Yolas. Um, why why we exist is kind of being uh, also being like alternative to this Google, and there's there's a lot of players who kind of are risking uh, uh, see it Google as threat because this kind of these big companies like Facebook, Google. Um, Apple, they are kind of, they are disrupting the uh, traditional industry and they are kind of like, uh, they are nice platforms to build on until they like go in, into your space. And for example, the car manufacturers are using Qt quite much. And one, one reason why they are, they, they are kind of afraid that the, like the data and, and, and the digital experience that is, is going to Apple and Google and not, not them. And they want the data, like trade driving data and mapping data. They want that for themselves so that they can use that to develop like uh, self-driving cars or, or, or whatnot. And, and, and it's the same thing like for local markets, like the, uh, this, uh, in, in Africa, America, Middle East, there's, there's a lot of like, uh, like fear and in Europe, uh, fear about like this uh, that this this couple of companies control too much. Um. If some of these uh, students now would like to uh, create an application, what kind of possibilities for delivery that application to some users uh, would there be? Would uh, Sailfish be uh, a, a, a viable alternative? And, and perhaps if if in what kind of applications or situations that might be. Okay, so we have a uh, application store and uh, we have uh, something we call Har Harpor where you can uh, publish your applications and then we will test, test that it doesn't have viruses and, and, and it matches our uh, requirements and, and then if it if is okay, then we publish it in the store and, and different service users can install those applications on, on their device. Um, and, and there's the Selfish SDK uh, is in, in our uh, websites. You can download our SDK. But the, like, uh, I guess like, yeah, that's, there's, um, there's a bit of shortage on the development devices currently. So like uh, if you are in India, you can buy Aquafish, but like, like, like currently 
uh, we don't sell sell devices, and so that's kind of so something we need to sort out soon. Okay, so so does that mean that if somebody wants to know to uh, create the application, then they have to run the applications in the uh, uh, emulator? Yes, in, yeah. In the, in the if if they if if you don't have a device, right? Yeah. But uh, I would have one question about what you just presented here. That uh, it, it looks like that the uh, coding that you did, the actually the declaration of the user interface. Yeah. Uh, and then, then you were able to run it quite quite quickly because my uh, well, what I recall is that you had to compile and then uh, transfer all, uh, that application to a virtual machine in, in that uh, yeah. environment. Has that, that now changed somehow? Or um, so we are developing uh, this feature called QML Live. Uh, it's not not all, all we didn't do it first, but. Uh, uh, integrating it now to our SDK. So it, what it means is that when, when you do a change and you save the document, it will like automatically run it on the device. Or in, in here it ran, run it in, inside a Ubuntu win, uh, window. Okay. Um, and yeah, this is kind of where things are, 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 are moving, is that you kind of, uh, your designers are in a cloud and uh, the same cloud as you are, uh, when you do a prototype, it will inst automatically be downloaded to all the designers' devices and they can try it out immediately. Uh, when you make changes to this code and uh, with it your development device, you can immediately see the result. Um, in, on top of this um, uh, code editors, there's different uh, hover controls for like sliders, to uh, like tuning certain durations and, and parameters. Um, but like we are not yet there, like we can, um, the, you, you can see that on, on like design prototyping tools nowadays, uh, it doesn't, hasn't like reached maybe on, on, on this, um, for example in Qt, Qt Creator is the main ID for Qt development, it, it's still like missing a lot of these capabilities, but, but it's, it's a pro, no brainer of course, like the faster you can iterate layouts and animations, the better. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like, I don't know, like, is it always the case for when you design UI or like, for example, with this one, it's just a, like a template and you play around with it and it's all right? Um, with HTML, HTML there's a problem that it's kind of, it has a lot of baggage from previously and it, it wasn't great at defining user interfaces before and so it, it like, like when you define the, the APIs are not that logical, and often like uh, like some some uh, feature or some layouting thing might work on only when you on a certain condition, and those those conditions are invisible, and you have to learn them. And and then like 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 this word, you kind of test these invisible boundaries and invisible uh, blockages that you kind of if you don't know what's happening, kind of you cannot go through. Um, QML is newer, and while we have those two like. If you say that I want to center item to a parent, it always is center. So uh, I think this is easier in, in that regard for, for lay, layout layouting. Uh, um, the HTML world is like I, I don't want to do web, web, uh, any UI development with HTML. Uh, it's it's slow and it's complex and um, but it's it's kind of it's running it runs everywhere. So there's a, and there's good tools nowadays for HTML. So they kind of try to solve it through the tooling. So that the tooling kind of tries to hide those complexities away from you, but um, yeah, it's the, the idea is that this is like as close to nat like natural language as possible. Like you say that I I want to show a list of uh, phone calls and the model model is called phone calls, and then I want to show a phone number of that particular contact and you say type contact dot phone number and it's all like natural English. And, and, and if you position stuff, you position with the uh, X and Y and width and height, or you position with anchors, which is saying that something is on the center or left, and then you can define margins uh, for those uh, anchors. So, and that's it's as easy as, as, as that, but um, 
Unfortunately, with technologies, there's kind of uh, this complexity can creep in, in very easily in, in these places, and you, you have like you might have um, like uh, you do, do Apple development. It might be that some of the uh, uh, iOS ready-made UI components or controls uh, they kind of they are really easy to use, and there's, there's a couple of ones that kind of don't behave like the others, and there's kind of these kind of inconsistencies and and. Um, these, these design prototyping tools are maybe like 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 w where I would start, not HTML or or, or with uh, Qt. Also, like it's kind of it comes from the C++ and developer background. So even though the QML within the Qt is is very designer friendly, the whole experience of setting it up and, and getting it uh, working, uh, you need some technical uh, you need to enjoy technology a bit. <laughs> okay, that is actually one question someone wants now to start developing or, or uh, experimenting with uh, the Qt and uh, Salesforce uh, user interfaces, what needs to be done? Uh, you download the SDK uh, and it, it is runs on Windows and Mac and, 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 on, on, um, and Linux and there uh, you are presented with this, this tool I, I saw, saw here I actually hide a couple of views. So here uh, you can see your project structure. Uh, there's uh, different uh, debugging uh, and design tools. Uh, oft often, uh, what I, I use often is just this text. So like. Uh, I don't know if I was if there was game if I was game uh, developer I would probably use uh, or designer I would probably move, use more visual tools for defining like models because they are so complex in UI it's quite simple anchoring of centering and and stacking that the, this kind of structured text is like if you you just need a text editor and able to run that code uh, and and you can already kind of do a lot and the same code uh, should run on any any device so. Uh, yeah, I kind of got sidetracked, but yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, now, one one question uh, would be that that if someone wants to uh, invest their learning time to uh, using uh, Qt and developing uh, the applications, uh, what why why would that be beneficial? What would be the benefits of of uh, delving into that direction? Yeah, so um, so Qt is used quite much in Finland. Uh, there's kind of, uh, like if, if you want to do user interfaces uh, in, in embedded space, like if you, there's uh, uh, like, uh, yeah, I mentioned the forestry machines, but it's also like, uh, like this, uh, there's these companies working with car manufacturers. There's certain, um, it's, it's probably on elevators uh, and on, um, there, there, are, there, are, there are like plenty of job, job opportunities there. If you are want to do, like start a company and you want to do uh, a, like uh, some smart home appliance or, or, or this design some like touch user interface, Qt is a good good choice for that. Um, yeah. Uh, so and like I I. This QML, I'm, I, I love QML. I'm, I'm, I'm partial. I used to work in the team who developed the technology, but in, in Australia. But um, uh, yeah, um, it's a hard, hard question to answer. So it, they, they are, they are like. Yeah. However, uh, one of the things what we have now seen is that how applications run on top of Salesforce, and I know that this is a little bit tricky question, but then again, uh, the Qt can be used to design and develop and define user interfaces for uh, other platforms as well. Yeah, so uh, if you uh, if you develop uh, with, with Qt, comp uh, Qt modules, you develop uh, application, then you can run it on, on Android and iOS as well. So you could do a, a touch-based touch device. That's actually a really good point because I forgot to mention. So, so it, it is a cross-platform tool, so if, if you, I don't know, want to do an application, you have an idea for application in, in, in 
Android or iOS based, you could, you could do it with Qt. Uh, I haven't worked, done that myself, so I'm not sure how easy that is. Uh, that there might be, like, uh, it's quite new, new this support for this mobile operating system, so there, there might be some rough edges. Um, but yeah. Uh, but the Qt can be used also for developing user interfaces for uh, standard or traditional uh, desktops and uh, laptops as well. Yeah. And a lot of the cute cu existing customers are kind of like it used to be that I don't know Lucasfilm who did their rendering uh, application that run run on cute uh, Netflix uh, Mo Motorola Sony ha had this Milo messaging device that you uh, just running cute like if that's actually not that desktop sorry but uh, there, there's like there's this I mean, if I remember correctly somewhere on Skype used to be built on cute so this desktop uh, desktop and what. Like you, you want to develop your application once. Now, now when you do uh, a, a, like a software product, you often have to do iOS version and Android version. What Qt allows you to do is you do one version, and then you kind of adapt it to different operating system. But that's not as much work, and then like uh, rewriting it with different technologies. Okay. okay. Any final questions uh, to Jona at this? I will, uh, uh, okay, one uh, question is that, uh, is it possible to have this example uh, available at our post web pages uh, so that if yeah. someone wants to uh, experiment and learn with it, uh, look, look at it and, and uh, have a closer look? Of course, we have now seen it, but it might take a while to, to yeah. learn a little bit more in details uh, regarding what that is. One of the things that I'm, I, I kept thinking is that how can you know what are all the uh, elements, the user interface components that can be used, and, and what are the, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, parameters, to, uh, and, uh, how to use that? So, so in order to learn a little bit of the basic components, basic elements, and, uh, and, and then utilize them uh, in the scripting of the QML, or defining, uh, declaring the, the user interface. So the SDK has auto-completion, but also there's this documentation uh, and examples uh, related to selfish development. So uh, on our selfishos.org website, there's uh, like reference to all the, all the different co components and then examples on how do you, how do you create uh, a selfish application. Okay, so that can be used then uh, uh, find out those kinds of things. Okay, uh, if no one has any uh, additional question. I very, very much thank Joona for coming here, uh, especially this early in the morning all the way from so uh, <laughs> that with such weather what we had today, it, it really was a heroic activity. Uh, activity. Thank you very much. And, and uh, 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 this, this is now a little bit earlier in the course than I originally perhaps uh, thought, but now you have at least one description of the practical uh, way of uh, doing declarative user interface uh, design, how it is being done on top of uh, Salesforce uh, platform. And, and, and I hope that uh, at least some of you will go and, and find out and, and look for more details uh, at the Salesforce.org website, which is then a good source for all information. Yes. This. Okay, thank you very much. Thank and, you. And, and uh, we will then uh, have our next uh, lecture next Monday. Thank you. If you're interested in seeing the device, <laughs> thank you. So if you're interested in seeing the devices, here are uh, the devices, yes. Okay, very good. Yeah.